Today, we are going to be cooking all fall themed recipes. Hey guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and today you are going to get all the fall feels. I know there's a lot of memes going around right now where Halloween is over and now it's Christmas everything and I am totally feeling Christmas. I'm actually going to be decorating very soon, but I still love all the fall flavors and that is what I'm going to share with you guys today. So I have a very easy lunch. Then we're going to roll into a dinner that everyone really enjoyed. And then I have a very scrumptious dessert that I'm going to be sharing as well. So let's go ahead and get right into this super easy lunch idea. For our harvest fall themed lunch, I'm gonna do a grilled cheese, but I'm gonna spruce it up a little bit. I love cheese and apple together, and then I'm adding in a little bit of turkey as well. So. I have, I am using my Dash sandwich little pocket maker. You can do your grilled cheese however you want. This is just super easy. So you could use a griddle, all that good stuff, a skillet on the stove. So I am going to spray it because I'm not going to butter my toast or anything, but I am going to use this apple cider fruit spread that I found at Trader Joe's. You can omit this or you can use any kind of apple butter that you want. I'm just gonna give this one a try for this. So I'm going to put a little a layer on my bread, and then I'm going to assemble it. So I've got one piece of toast on the bottom, and I'm gonna make two sandwiches. I'm just gonna make show you guys one. I'm gonna put two pieces of this deli turkey meat that I have, and then three thinly sliced apples, and I'm really just using what I have. So you could use American cheese or any kind of sliced cheese that you want. I have these little, I bought it in bulk, um, sharp cheddar cheese. So I'm gonna be using that. And then I am going to put another little layer of fruit spread on the inside of my top piece of bread as well. All right, so I'm just going to put it like that and I'm just gonna close it or you can just grill it up like a normal grilled cheese. Okay, so here is the spruced up grilled cheese. You can see the bits of apple and the cheese and the turkey, so yummy. But I will have this contraption or pocket sandwich maker um, linked down below if you guys want to check it out. It is super easy to clean. So I'm gonna leave it sitting here open while it cools off and then I'm just going to take a slightly soapy rag and wipe it out and then it is good to go. So you guys, like I mentioned, make your grilled cheese however you want. Just add these yummy fillings to give it a little fall touch. So we are starting this dinner off and I know that is really loud, but I've got a little bit less than, I had a 10 ounce package of ground beef, so that's what I'm using and I am just going to brown this up. Whenever I'm cooking any kind of ground meat, I always add a little bit of garlic and onion powder, so I do have a little bit of that sprinkled on top. And then I'm going to be using some egg noodles. So I pulled out the wrong lid, but it's still gonna work just fine. I've got a pot of salted water in here waiting to come to a boil. So we're going to let the water come to a boil, add in my, what is this, 12, ounce package of wide egg noodles and I'm going to finish browning up my ground beef. Okay, my ground beef is done and I typically cook with lean beef so I do not need to drain the grease or anything but if you have a lot of grease, I would definitely drain it. And I am still waiting for my water to boil but I am moving right along. So I've got two cans here that I'm actually going to add a cream of mushroom soup. And I'm going to add in this one jar, what is this, 15 ounces of French onion dip. Okay, and then I am just going to mix the ground beef with these other ingredients until everything is nice and combined. Oh, and I did already turn my heat off. You don't need the heat on anymore. I've got my beef mixture all mixed up. My water is boiling. I'm going to add in my egg noodles. And these only take about seven minutes to cook. 
So I'm going to let these cook and I am gonna go ahead and get my oven preheated to 350 degrees. My noodles are done, I drained them and I'm adding them to my beef mixture. And I'm going to, ooh, I should have used my bigger pan with the higher walls, but that's okay. I'll just be careful and mix this in a little bit. I'm also adding in one cup. You can use beef broth. I have this bouillon that I just add to water, just convenient, so I'm adding in one cup of that. And now I'm gonna get everything nice and mixed together. Okay, typically I would use like a nine by 13 dish, <laughs> but I've been doing several cooking recipes today that you guys have some of you've already seen, some you're gonna see in the future. Um, so my sink is already full. And I have a couple of these left over from some freezer meals. So I'm gonna make my life easier. And I am going to be using this disposable foil pan. But just to help prevent with sticking, I am gonna go ahead and spray it. If you guys are new to my channel, you don't know that I am definitely a sprayer of everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna give that a good spray. And now I'll probably have to do a couple spoonfuls first because this is really heavy, but I'm going to get my beef onion casserole mixture into my pan. All right, and then we are going to spread that out just so it's nice and even in here. Now I'm just going to take some of these crispy fried onions and cover the top with them. Oops, I totally spilled that all over the counter. <laughs> all right, let's just let's just do it this way since it's not cooperating. You know what? I don't have any other use for this, but this recipe. So, I live in Texas. We're just going to go big or go home and add the whole container. What is this? This is only 6 ounces. It's not that much. And add the whole container to the top here and just like I said, try to make sure everything is covered, spread it out a bit. And now I'm going to put it again. My 350 degree oven is ready and I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes. So while dinner or the casserole is cooking, I'm going to make a salad for the side. So in my bowl, I just have some baby spring mix in here. I'm going to add, this is a 3.5 ounce container. So I'm just gonna sprinkle all of the feta cheese on top. And I'm gonna add about half a cup of chopped pecan pieces. I'm also gonna add in one pretty good sized apple that I chopped up. <laughs> so now I was going to add a pomegranate seeds. That just sounded so good. I've done it in the past, but the second I brought the pomegranates that I bought home, my kids love them and they wanted me to open them up and we ate them. So I am going to go ahead and add in some dried cranberries. That works really good too. It's a good combination. So I always have dried cranberries on hand. I add them in oatmeal and salads and all sorts of stuff. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I think pomegranate seeds would be delicious in here, and that was my plan, but we already ate them. So I'm gonna add in the cranberries, and that is it for our salad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and whip up the dressing. Okay, so here are the ingredients that I'm going to put into the dressing, and I don't remember where I got this. I might have gotten it from the Dollar Tree. I've had it for a very long time, and whenever I make dressings, I like to just mix or put all the ingredients in here, close it, and then shake it, and it is good to go, and it you know works perfect to put in your fridge. So I will have this typed out down below, the ingredients or the measurements so you guys know, but I'm gonna be using some pepper, garlic powder, honey, balsamic vinegar, and then some olive oil, and that is the dressing that I typically, sometimes I will buy like an already made raspberry vinaigrette that goes really good with the salad that we just threw together. So I am gonna go ahead and mix these ingredients up. Again, I'll have them written out in the description box so you guys can see the measurements, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them all in my container here.
Okay, so I feel like the last few times I've shared a dinner plate, it's been mine. <laughs> so I figured I would show you guys one of the kids. Now, depending on which kid gets this, they might not eat all of this amount, but they'll eat the casserole and then Bryce and Rose will not have dressing. They don't like dressing on their salads. They just like it dry and they'll eat the salad like this. So I wanted to show you that, but Pearl will have the dressing and then Mark and I will have the dressing as well. So this is how the casserole turned out and then the salad without any dressing. But I'm gonna go ahead and make everybody else's plates. The house smells amazing. This is so yummy. It's just super creamy especially if you add that beef broth, it's just really yummy. And then I love the crunchy um, fried onions on the top. Definitely makes for a good fall themed dinner. Okay, it is time for dessert and we are gonna make some pumpkin spice cookie bars. I will have the recipe linked in the description box. I did find it online. I am not including any nuts because my kids aren't huge fans of nuts in their desserts. So um, it does show that you can add walnuts. So this is everything I'm gonna be using. I've got the pumpkin spice flavored baking truffles or little chocolate chips, some pumpkin, sweetened condensed milk. Our seasonings are going to be ground allspice, ground nutmeg, and ground cinnamon. I've got half a cup of butter here that we are going to be melting, some sweetened coconut flakes, graham cracker crumbs, and then it does call for a cup of chocolate chips as well. This looks like it might be a cup, but just in case it's not, that is the rest of my regular chocolate chips. But I do have a bag of mini chocolate chips that I haven't even opened yet. So if I need to get to a cup, I'll go ahead and add some of these as well. But these are our ingredients. I do already have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. So now we're gonna start making these really yummy pumpkin spice cookie bars. Okay, so I did melt my half a cup of butter and my oldest daughter is making some lunch, so you guys are gonna hear her cooking in the background. But to my bowl of melted butter, I am going to add one and a half cups of the graham cracker crumbs. Okay, so we are going to mix these two ingredients together. Okay, I am using a disposable pan because I have plenty and I'm actually doing a lot of different videos today. I am in the kitchen cooking all day long, so I don't want a huge pile of dishes. So I am using a reusable one. I think this is a like nine by 11. A nine by 13 pan is totally fine. I am going to spray it just to help once it bakes up and I'm cutting it out so it's not sticking as much. Okay, and I'm gonna get my little graham cracker crumb mixture spread out and pushed in onto the bottom of my pan. So I've got my little cookie crust mixture on the bottom. I'm gonna set this aside. And again, saving on dishes. All I did was rinse out the same bowl and I'm going to use this one to mix together the rest of the ingredients. In my bowl, I'm adding in my can of sweetened condensed milk, one third cup of the pumpkin, and then half a teaspoon of the spices. So we've got half a teaspoon of the allspice, half a teaspoon of the nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of the cinnamon. And we are just going to whisk all of that seasoning and pumpkin into the sweetened condensed milk. All right, and we are just gonna pour this mixture over our graham cracker crumb layer. And I'm just gonna use the back of my spoon and make sure it is evenly spread out here. Okay, and now I'm just gonna top it with the coconut and the chocolate chips. So I've got one cup of coconut that I'm just sprinkling all over the top. And after the coconut, or I guess the order really doesn't matter how you want it to look, but you would add the nuts at this point as well. One cup of nuts sprinkled on top of that. Oh, and look at that. Just about a cup. So I'm not even gonna open my other bag yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle these on top. Oh man, this is gonna be a super sweet dessert. Definitely gonna need a glass of milk with this one. I'm definitely excited about the pumpkin spice. Oh my goodness, I've never purchased these before. These little, what are they calling them, nuggets? A baking truffles, that's what they're calling them. I couldn't find the chips, so these are definitely gonna have to do, but just sprinkling a cup of these on top as well. Now that my little pumpkin spice cookie bar concoction is ready, my oven is already preheated again to 350 degrees, so I'm gonna bake this for 25 minutes. All right, these little pumpkin spice truffles are so 
flipping good. <laughs> so we've got our dessert ready. I let it cool completely before I cut it. Now, I'm wondering if the recipe, you should add a little bit more butter. I don't know, the graham cracker crust part did not stay together completely. Like you can still see here, it's pretty loose, but it's still really yummy. I don't think you'll be able to pick this up like a bar and eat it. You'll want to use a fork. I did go ahead and get one piece. Like my eyes are probably bigger than my stomach here. That's a pretty big piece. Maybe I'll let one of the kids have this one, but this is for after dinner dessert, which doesn't happen all the time, but the kids are definitely excited to try a piece of this tonight. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed those recipes. My family definitely did. If you liked these ideas, give this video a big thumbs up. If you are new, I would love for you to subscribe and join our community here. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and your Monday so far has been well, and I will see you in the next video.